Hawkins. We used you to track our real enemy, Tango. The situation has become very complicated. Targets have been established. Now the plan has a green light. You must move. The agency is pumping out this video. Emergence preparedness is one of those things that's really easy to do before there's a disaster and darn near impossible to do afterwards. The preparedness I'm talking about, very simple, very, very cheap insurance for you and your family in case there's an emergency. And it really is insurance. National surveys have really shown us really only about one in three Americans have taken steps to be prepared as a family. Believe it or not, it's less in places like New York City. You don't have to prepare for every disaster separately. If you can think about what you may need for a blizzard, you've done most of preparing for what you're going to need for a nuclear disaster also. Number one, most importantly, making sure you have water and food. The actual human body needs about eight glasses of water a day to keep from dying. And without water, you're really on the clock for dehydration two to three days. Anything you want to cook with, any personal hygiene, that's all got to be extra, and you have to think about how you're going to get that. You never want to drink flood waters, but any kind of moving river water, streams, wells, that type of thing. There's always concern, specifically after a nuclear incident, that there could be fallout in the atmosphere contaminating the water. But the alternative of dehydration is not an acceptable one. Filter it to try and remove as much of the particulate matter as you can. That'll contain the fallout. And then you can drink it. Two, making sure that you have a way to shelter yourself from cold, wet, or excessive heat conditions. Remember that cold, wet conditions can threaten your life just as much as dehydration. So you have to think about how you're going to keep your family warm if there's no fuel. Number three, I like to think about talking to your family and making sure you have a plan to get everyone back together and a plan for people who aren't home when a disaster strikes. And it's something that could happen so quickly. And without a plan, it can take days or weeks to find family members who may be scattered after an emergency. Do it this weekend. Do it tonight. Get your family together and spend 15 minutes talking about what you're going to do if there's an emergency that puts you in different places where you can't keep in touch with each other. Number four, working with your community and making sure that you have taken the steps to work with the local authorities and work with those who live around you in your building or in your neighborhood to be able to work together because community that responds together is going to have a better chance of having a good outcome. Even if there's a nuclear detonation, as awful as that's going to be, you don't want to have somebody thinking that they just have to give up. We want to make sure that we are teaching our family that if something unfortunate happens, we have the preparedness that we've done to best position ourselves to bounce back afterwards and get life back to normal. Your destination? Jericho, Kansas. Find a safe house there. Establish a routine. Then come back and get your family. This will be our rally point. Remember, Hawkins, it's up to you now. Godspeed. A nuclear detonation is an absolutely horrible thing. And certainly a nuclear detonation could be a mega event. No matter what you have on, there is no suit that's going to protect you from radiation. You have to stay at home, close the windows, don't eat or drink anything contaminated. The mob mentality does start to set in. People will pick up guns. We're heading for global destruction. It's the death of everything. 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 everything.